Why should interest rates be raised now? Yeah, interest rates are at a historically very low level. So they'd never been below 2% until uh, the, they were cut to 0.5% in early 2009. And the initial circumstances that justified that, the crisis that we were in, has now passed and we should be seeking to normalise them back to around 2% uh, as, at the earliest opportunity. Now, the Bank of England has missed previous opportunities. It had to do that when growth was picking up a little bit. With the more sustained growth pickup now, it ought to be taking that chance. One problem with rates being so extraordinarily low is if anything further goes wrong, then there's no scope to act. So we should be seeking to have a little bit of normalisation. We're not talking about going back to 5% or something overnight, but we should be seeking to raise a little bit now, taking this chance. OK, what do you say to that, Nigel Mills? Um, well, I think that interest rates definitely should stay where they are. The recovery is extremely fragile. Um, people are dependent on low interest rates to be able to, first of all, afford their mortgages, and businesses are dependent on low interest rates to be able to afford to pay their loans. Uh, in the absence of a sustained growth period and the absence of wages inflation, which at the moment I think is about 1.1%, I don't see any point in raising interest rates and putting, pouring cold water basically on the economy at this stage. Isn't there a, a problem, Andrew, that if the... I mean, the recovery is only now just getting underway. It looks like it will be quite strong this year, but there's still a lot of what economists call zombie companies out there that if they had to pay more to service their debt, uh, they could be in real trouble, and a lot of people with mortgages could be in real trouble as well. So why would we rush into this? It would be helpful, actually, to the recovery to liquidate some of the zombie companies because they're tying up capital and workers and so on that could be used in more productive activities. It actually slows growth over the medium term to have all of these companies in place. Furthermore, having such extraordinarily low interest rates is liable to mean that it, as the recovery occurs, uh, a number of businesses take on unwise loans in order to fund uh, non-viable investment projects. So it would be better to take the opportunity to raise things just a little to eliminate the most egregious examples of zombie companies. As I say, nobody's talking about rates becoming unsupportive, so we still would want to have extremely loose monetary policy. It's just a move away from the emergency levels that we had from 2009 that I'm talking about. And, and that's a point, is it not, Mr Mills? The emergency is now over. We await to see the strength of the recovery, but the sense of crisis has gone both here and in the Eurozone, and 0.5% administered interest rate is a huge historical anomaly. I mean, we, they, they will have to rise, will they not? Uh, interest rates will have to rise in, in, um, invariably, inevitably, yes, but a long time, hopefully, in the future. We, the UK economy operates uh, not independently, but as part of a world uh, economy. When you've got record interest, low rent interest rates in America, record low interest rates in Europe, um, those economies are slowly recovering as well. Why on earth would you want to put the British economy at a huge disadvantage by advocating an interest rate rise now before the, the recovery has really taken hold and before the benefits of that recovery are felt? I mean, we're only to talking, uh, Mr Lillico, about the administered rate by the Bank of England. In a sense, the markets have already spoken. They've done what you want to do, the yield on 10-year British bonds is now up around the 3% mark and likely to rise more. That's the return to normality. That's the basis on which a lot of people, uh, companies will now be borrowing on 3% plus. I mean, it's happening. You're getting your rate rise. That's very encouraging. Yes, I'm very pleased that we're getting those measures as well. Uh, and I think the Bank of England is uh, behind the curve, uh, as illustrated by the rise in the uh, broad uh, yields that you were indicated. Does it uh, matter if it's behind the curve? It will matter over the medium term, because one of the dangers that we see is that uh, once we get into a recovery phase, the enormous amount of money printing done through quantitative easing then gets leveraged up uh, as the banks look healthier uh, and they're more willing to lend. We've actually had quite strong recovery over the past year or so with bank lending continuing to contract. If that started to rise, then we could see quite an, uh, a, we could see a rise in broad money that was difficult to control, which then might lead into an unsustainable boom. One of the key things is to act a little bit early. Uh, I think it's a mistake to think that we should wait here until everything looks like it's completely sweet because by then you might be too late to act to prevent the next right. crisis. Gentlemen, we'll have to leave it there. Thanks for debating the issue with us.